All right, so we have the shell of our application done. Basically, the, just the UI, we have materialized. Now we want to bring in our data and then output that. So Fire, Firestore has some pretty good documentation. Uh, so if you go to firebase.google.com slash docs slash Firestore, and over here on the side under Cloud Firestore, you have some good documentation. If we go to Query Data and then Get Data, this will show us how we can get a document so basically we need our collection in this case they have a collection called cities and then they're calling dot get and then what that does is it returns a promise and we we handle promises with dot then and then a callback function inside there and then we can do what we want with that data all right so what we're gonna do is go to our dashboard component that's where we're gonna work first I'm just gonna make that smaller and we want to first of all go to our data object right here and we want to create uh, a value called employees and we're going to initially set that to just an empty array so this is the property uh, that we want to fill when we fetch our data now under data which ends right here by the way I'm using bracket colorizer which is really handy you can tell exactly where data ends because it's purple just like where it starts but we're going to put a comma here and we're going to say created. Now, when we use this created method, this is going to run when the component is created or when it's loaded. So it'll automatically run. Now, when it automatically runs or it's automatically created, we want to fetch the data from our collection. Now, remember how we have our Firebase init? If we look right here, and we're exporting Firestore from here. So that's basically our database. So in dashboard, right above the export default, we're going to bring that in. And we're gonna bring it in as DB. So we'll say import DB from Firebase init. Actually, it should be dot slash Firebase init because we put it inside the components folder. If it was outside here somewhere, you'd have to make sure you have the correct path. So now we have this DB object to work with. So in created, we can say db.collection and we want to work with our employees collection, which we created in the first video, and we can say .get and then .get takes in it's going to return a promise so we want to do dot then all right and then inside here we want to put in uh, a parameter of a query snapshot okay so query snapshot we're going to use an arrow function here so we're going to go like that and then we want to take that query snapshot and we want to loop through we want to use dot for each Okay, and then for each takes in a callback function. I'm going to use an arrow function here as well. So I'm going to just say doc and then set that to a code block. And then in here is where we want to take our data. Okay, we want to create a variable called data and set that equal to an object with all the data that we get from the document that's fetched from our Firestore. So this will actually run right away. So before I do any of the, the, the data, let's just console.log doc and see what we get. So if I save this and let this component re-render, we get this document snapshot. And that's not what we want. What we want is actually in the prototype for this object, and it's a function called data. Okay, this function will give us the actual data. So if we go back up here and say console console log doc doc data like that, which is a function or a method, now you can see it's actually getting each each object. So we can see the name, the employee ID, all that stuff. Uh, now, if we want to get just the ID, the Firebase ID, we can get that with doc dot ID. So if I save that. and just go down here you'll see it gives us each id so we can get the firebase id like that but the rest of the fields we need to do doc dot data so just remember that and now we'll create our data object down here so this actually needs to be formatted with quotes like this and then id 
and we can set that to doc.id. Remember, that's the Firebase ID. Then we want our own employee ID that we created. So we'll set that to doc.data.employee ID. Okay, and then we'll do the name. So the name again will be doc.data.name. And we want the department. That'll be doc.data.dept. And then we want the position. All right, so now we have our data object. Now we want to push this on to this employee's property right here. So all we have to do is go under where we defined the data object and say this dot employees dot push. And we want to push on the data. OK, so we'll save that. Let's make sure we get no errors or anything. Okay, we're not going to see any anything in the UI yet, but it is in fact being pushed on to employees. So now we should have access to it up here in the template. So what I'm going to do to render this is use a, col uh, a collection, a materialized collection, which is like a fancy unordered list. So uh, and you can actually do it with a heading. So I'm not going to use an H3 here. What I'm going to do is put in a UL with the class of collection and also the class of width dash header and inside here we'll put in an li with the class of collection item or, I'm sorry collection header and we'll say uh, we'll put an h4 and we'll say employees and then the next li is where we actually want to uh, loop through and output each each uh, employee so we're going to put an li and we're going to use the v-4 directive and we're going to set this to employee in employees okay that's how we loop through if you're an angular user this is similar to ng4 so we also need to include a unique key when we do this or we'll get an error so we're going to use vbind so we want to vbind a key and we're going to set that to the employee ID. So employee underscore ID. Uh, or I'm sorry, employee dot ID. We're going to use the Firebase ID. So that's actually accessing this right here, the Firebase ID, not the employee ID. All right, so now that we have that, let's just add a class to this list item, which is for materialize called collection dash item. So let's save that and let's see, oh, did I not put, I, don't, I didn't put it an ending li. Okay, so now this li, you can see there's three empty li's generating and there's three objects in our database. So we just want to go inside this li and now put what we want to put in here. So let's say employee dot name and now we're getting each name and this error is still down here but if I reload that should go away all right so we have the names now I also want to put the department right here on the side uh, actually I want to put the ID and the department so I'm gonna go ahead and put in here a colon before the name and then we'll put our double curly braces and we'll say employee dot employee underscore ID so that gives us the ID and then before that I'm gonna wrap I'm gonna create a div with the class of chip which is a materialized class which is kinda of like a label in bootstrap just gives it a background and some padding and in here we're gonna put in the employee dot DEPT and now you can see we, we get each one's um, department now, right now, these aren't ordered. I want these to be ordered by department. It, it looks like they are just because of the way that, that we did it. Um, 
but they're not. If we want to order them by department, we can go down to where we did our get. So right here where we did dot get and then we did dot then. Right before the dot get, we can say dot order. I'm going to say dot order by. And then we can pass in here DEPT and save. All right, it looks the same, but now it'll definitely be ordered by department. So there's some other stuff we need to do here. I want the little eye icon so we can click and we can go to the view page. So in materialize, we need to have a link with the class of secondary content. Now, remember, we're not using links. We're not using a tags. We're using router link tags. So I'm going to go right at the bottom here and we're going to put in a router link with a to attribute. Okay, the router link, I'm also going to give a class of secondary content. Okay, and then the two, we're going to set that. Uh, actually, we're going to use a V bind. So we're going to say V bind colon two equals. And then in here, we're going to put some curly braces because we're not just going to a link. We actually need to include a parameter which is the employee ID. It needs to know which employee to use in the view component, the view employee component. So we put name of the component, which is view dash employee. And that name comes from the router. If we look right here, view employee, it also needs this employee ID. So in addition to name, we're going to have params. So put a comma and then params. Let me just close this up. So params is going to be uh, another object. So we'll set that to another set of curly braces. And we want to say employee underscore ID and set that to employee dot employee underscore ID. OK, which is coming from this right here, just like all the rest of these properties. So that should work now inside the router link. I want to put that I icon. So it'll be an I with the class of F.A. and also the class of F.A. dash E Y E like that. So let's save. And now we have our little icon. Let's click it and it takes us to slash and then whatever that ID is. So Sarah has the, the employee ID of 002. If I click that, it brings us to 002. Now we haven't added any markup. We haven't added a template here with that info. What we're going to have to do is get this from the I, from the URL and then make another fetch to Firestore with that ID to get that, that employee info. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do that in the next video.